Hello my friends. Welcome to my first what I eat in a week video. Yes, this is my very first time filming absolutely everything I ate in a week. So the lighting in this video might not be the best at times because I couldn't always be bothered to put up lights. But well, this is a realistic week of eating so I figured the lighting might as well be realistic as well. So there are really a lot of good recipes in this. Some of them are from my blog, some are from my favorite cookbooks that are from other vegan bloggers. I'll make sure that I link any recipes from my blog or from other people's blogs or cookbooks in the description box below. So if you want to recreate any of these recipes, make sure you check that out. So for now, let's just get into the video and what I ate this week. So typically on the weekends, I make a lot of food that I can eat throughout the week, mostly for breakfast and lunch, but I'll make some basic things I can add stuff to for dinner. And this weekend was no different, except that I was doing some recipe testing. This one is for some sweet potato biscuits because I'm trying to perfect a biscuits and gravy recipe. And for reasons I'll tell you later on, I decided to make sweet potato biscuits. So that's what I'm making here. Smokey. Smokey. Of course, Smokey had to be there to help me out. She was keeping my place in the book there. To be honest, this was not the best recipe that I've tried. I mean, it was okay, but definitely not the perfect one for my biscuits and gravy recipe. And probably not one that I would make again. I definitely liked the sweet potato sole one better, and there was another one I tried after this. I don't remember who it was by, but it was much, much better. Usually biscuit recipes, you roll out the dough and then cut out the biscuits you know, with a biscuit cutter or a glass. This one had you roll it into balls and flatten them out and they really came out more like dinner rolls and they were much more dense than I would have liked, um, but they were okay. The mushroom gravy I made is a sweet potato sole recipe. I really love her cookbook. It's one of my favorites and if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. And this gravy was pretty good. It was a little bit salty. I don't think that's because of her recipe, but because I used both Better Than Bouillon and some tamari in the end. And I think if I made it that way next time, I would definitely skip the tamari. Um, but this has some rosemary and other herbs and some nutritional yeast in it. I also added some black pepper and some, there's that tamari that I shouldn't have added, but oh well, it was pretty good. I also made some greens um, that were also from the Sweet Potato Soul cookbook. This is one of my family's favorite recipes. Um, her recipe is actually for collard, collard greens, but I didn't have those, so I was using kale here instead and some canned tomatoes instead of fresh because that's what I had on hand. And I also had some spinach, so I threw that in there because it, this recipe didn't have a ton of kale in it. And I wanted to add some greens. So here I am putting together the biscuits and gravy. It's definitely not the perfect biscuits and gravy recipe yet. I will continue to work on it and when I figure it all out I will definitely share that with you guys. But in the meantime if you want to try this I highly suggest getting the sweet patol sweet patol <laughs> sweet potato sole cookbook. So this was just one meal on Saturday. It was dinner but I wanted to show you guys what I had made because you'll see this coming up throughout the rest of the week. On Sunday morning, I just decided to make a really easy breakfast. 
I had some leftover sweet potato from making the biscuits and I also had some leftover lentil stew soup which was a rainbow plant life recipe and it made a huge batch so I had a lot of this leftover and I just put some of that together heated it up in the microwave and now I'm putting it into a whole wheat tortilla to make sort of a breakfast burrito and and normally I probably would have added some greens to this but I think I must have forgotten. I did add some roasted jalapenos that I had from eating at a Mexican restaurant a couple nights before. <laughs> They're so good. I happened to be filming a video this day for potato frittata, so that's what I had for lunch. And this came out really good, and that video, as I speak, is already out now because this current video is taking me so long to edit that I already edited and posted another video in the meantime. <laughs> but it is really good, so you should check that out. I also took a trip to the dollar store that day to get some bins for organizing my pantry and decided to see what they had in the grocery aisle. They had some of these soft pretzels and some of these veggie meatballs that are literally made of vegetables and rice. And I tried them later in the week and they have a mochi-like texture. Fascinating. I also got a can of coconut milk, which wasn't very good, a bottle of dried basil, which I didn't show here, and some panko. I didn't have enough room in my freezer to put the pretzels in there, so I just went ahead and baked them up. I was getting ready for a snack anyway. And they come with these little packets of pretzel salt, but it they wouldn't stick, so I added some aquafaba to the top and then the, the salt stuck pretty well. We were pretty impressed with these and for $1.25, you just can't go wrong. My son had a friend over that day and he loves to cook for his friends. So he was making a sweet and sticky tofu dish that we've been making quite frequently lately. It's really good and I'll definitely have to share that with you sometime. But I opted for eating mine a little bit later because I just baked those pretzels and so I had one of those and a Zevia root beer while we sat in the living room and watched some Spirited Away. And obviously, those pretzels were a hit. Monday morning, we had a bit of snow, which is not unusual for March, which is when I actually filmed this. And in Colorado, we sometimes have snow all the way up until May. Hopefully that doesn't happen this year. And I always start my day with matcha. I usually put a few different supplements in it, like this mushroom powder that I got. It's got all the mushrooms, and I always add some stevia for sweetness, and some ashwagandha for hormone balance, and to ease stress. And then I just add some more hot water to it, and I blend it all up to make the milk frothy. But this does create a little bit of pressure, so watch out when you open it. I only show myself making this once, but you can assume that I had this every morning because I always do. So I was going to eat some oat waffles for breakfast that I made the other day, but it looked like my son ate them all. So I had some leftover frittata and a sweet potato biscuit with just a little bit of vegan butter on it. I added a little bit of salt to the frittata, but otherwise this was the perfect comfort breakfast food. I enjoyed my breakfast while I checked my emails and got my work day started. My hubby is trying to grow some trees from some seeds he bought online, so those are in my office window. And it was still snowing outside, but I enjoyed this little cutie for a snack. Well, since I didn't get to have any blender oat waffles for breakfast, 
I decided to make some for lunch. These are really good and a great alternative to oatmeal because I've kind of gotten sick of eating oatmeal, but they're really easy and it's a recipe from High Carb Hannah, so they're healthy and they don't have any fat in them. But here I am adding a little bit of fat to the top in the form of this silk Greek style yogurt. This is vanilla flavor and it is nice and thick and creamy just like real Greek yogurt would be. And then I had some strawberries that were just a little too sour, so I soaked them in some sugar, and that made this nice syrup that I then poured on top. These were really good, and my son immediately ate the other one. I highly recommend this recipe. I'll leave a link to it in the description box. I needed an afternoon snack and I remembered I had some edamame in the freezer so I cooked these in some water with some garlic, roasted garlic, better than bouillon, which didn't flavor it that much so I added some pretzel salt to it. I mean they typically have salt on them anyway and these were just the perfect snack. My son was making some fried rice with his friend, but he's not vegan and he did put some egg in it, which meant I couldn't have any even though it looked so good. So I just steamed up my broccoli and had that with some more of that leftover lentil soup stew and some brown rice that I had in the refrigerator. And then I topped that with some more of that Trader Joe's jalapeno sauce that I'm obsessed with and some nutritional yeast. And this was a nice filling and very healthy dinner that I ate in the living room while Blue kicked back on the couch. And then I had some organic chocolate truffles for dessert. In addition to my matcha, I also have a coffee every day. A few years ago, I quit drinking coffee completely and switched to just matcha, but I've been drinking one coffee a day for probably the last several months. I just really enjoy coffee, and it really does give me the little extra boost I need to get my brain juices flowing in the morning, and I definitely need help with that. And again, I'm just going to show you my coffee routine once, but you can assume that I had this every day. On this morning, I only had a few minutes to make breakfast. I had already done my morning yoga and meditation and had my matcha, but I wasn't feeling too hungry. So I just grabbed a piece of this sourdough bread, which is really large, <laughs> to make toast. And I spread some almond butter and homemade cranberry jelly on it that needed to get finished up. And that was it. Normally, this wouldn't be enough to fill me up for breakfast, but I was actually pretty satisfied and just had a banana for a mid-morning snack, and that kept me pretty full until lunch. By the time lunch rolled around, I was pretty hungry, and as you can see, I have lots of leftovers in my refrigerator. Please excuse anything that's not vegan because my family is not vegan. <laughs> I decided to have some leftover biscuits and gravy and the greens from the other day, so I just put that all in a big bowl and heated it up in the microwave. As for the biscuits, I for some reason decided to have one and a half and I just heated those up in the air fryer which worked really well for this. And this lunch was really delicious and filling <laughs> and hot. So for dinner, I was still working on getting rid of some of those leftovers and I was a little short on time because I wanted to go to the gym to do a Zumba class. So I decided to make some tostadas with some more of the lentil stew. This stew or soup is really good, but I've been eating it for like two weeks. So I'm actually getting a little bit sick of it. And I put the wrong time on the toaster oven and the tortillas ended up a bit burnt, but that's okay. They were nice and toasty and crunchy. 
I added lettuce, tomato, pickled onion, and some more of that jalapeno sauce that I love so much, but I'm really missing some avocado or guacamole. Avocados were just so expensive this week. I think they were being held hostage or something. I don't know. I had a really intense Zumba workout, so I was kind of hungry afterwards, so I had one of these builder bars, which I love. They're like a candy bar. Wednesday breakfast, I'm still trying to use leftovers, and I had a couple of potatoes in the fridge, one steamed and one was baked. They were both pretty small, so I smashed them up with a fork and then put them in the air fryer with a meatless sausage patty. I also steamed up some broccoli, which was mostly stems, but that's okay. I'm just trying to be better about eating more veggies because so far this week I feel like I haven't been eating as many as I usually do. And I know eating broccoli for breakfast might seem a little weird, but it was good. And I took my vitamin supplements, some B12, and I've been using these vitamins from Care Of, which I really like. I'm not sponsored, but I do have a discount code in the description box below if you wanna check it out. For a snack, I just had a straight up sliced apple, no peanut butter, or almond butter, or anything like that, just apple. So another reason I made sweet potato biscuits rather than regular biscuits was because I'm trying to recreate this recipe for a sweet potato biscuit sandwich that a local cafe makes and I'm totally obsessed with it and just really need to recreate it myself. But it's got a lot of different elements that I've had to play around with. And so here I am just steaming up the sweet potatoes. I'm not sure how they do theirs, but these turned out pretty well. And then I just took my dog for a walk while those were steaming. He's a husky and he really enjoys the snow. Like I said, there are a lot of elements to this sandwich and one of them is caramelized onions, which I kind of forgot about it when I started the potatoes steaming. So I did a quick caramelization, which worked out pretty well. Just sauteing the onions in some olive oil and covering it with a lid and letting it caramelize. And then I was ready to put my sandwich together. So I used pesto instead of chimichurri because that's what I had on hand. And they also use arugula in theirs, but I didn't have any of that. So I used spinach, but oh my gosh, this came out so good. It is a little different from the one at the coffee shop, but it is so delicious. And I can't wait to share this recipe with you guys. Mm. That's really good. <laughs> Yeah. I finally got rid of a lot of leftovers, but I still had some brown rice and I also wanted to have plenty of vegetable matter in my dinner. So I decided to make this garlic broccoli tofu dish that is from one of my new favorite cookbooks called Vegan Asian. I'll link that one in the description box below too. Um, and we had an abundance of mushrooms because Jack brought a large package home from the store not realizing that I had already bought a large box so even though this recipe doesn't call for mushrooms I put plenty of them in there and since it's really a stir-fry you could just add whatever kinds of vegetables you want I really like the broccoli and mushroom combo um, it's also really good with just broccoli I've made this several times and it's definitely one of my favorites now and definitely a keeper. I just reheated my brown rice by putting it on top of some white rice that I made in the Instant Pot and I just put the lid back on and it steams up really nicely. 
But my son did get really upset with me that I didn't fluff the rice. Oops. I was super tired on Thursday because the cat would not let me sleep and it would have been helpful if I had made some overnight oats like I had planned to do, but I didn't. So I just made some regular oatmeal, which really doesn't take long. So what am I complaining about? I didn't even eat it all, which is highly unusual, but I just wasn't that hungry. But that means at lunch I was definitely hungry and so I ate the last of the frittata that had been sitting at the back of the fridge. And although I didn't show it here, I did add some jalapeno sauce. I think I am seriously addicted to this stuff. Right before I went to pick up my son from school in the afternoon, Jack was making some of his amazing chai, but I didn't have time to have any right then. But when I got back, I did have an afternoon snack of the leftover tofu and broccoli. My son had eaten a lot of it for breakfast, so there really wasn't a whole lot left. I had to run an errand after work and it was really cold outside and all I could think of was making a nice cozy soup. So I decided just to make a simple veggie soup. I've got onions, celery, carrot, mushrooms, garbanzo beans, some spinach. Um, I think I used some better than bouillon, vegetable bouillon. <laughs> and this was such a good soup and so easy to make. I also cooked up some pasta on the side just to make it sort of like a chicken noodle soup, but like veggie noodle soup. I like to keep the pasta separate because um, yeah, otherwise it just gets sort of soggy. You know what I mean? So we finally made it to Friday. Can you believe it? And for breakfast, I made some sweet potato hash, which is yet another recipe from Sweet Potato Soul. But I had lots of sweet potatoes on hand and I just added some cut up meatless sausage patties to it. And this is such a good hearty breakfast. This is really one of my favorite kinds of breakfast, just like some kind of potatoes with some kind of protein, a little bit of veggies. I put some nutritional yeast and some ketchup on there and it was good to go. This was so delicious. I decided to treat myself for lunch and get some vegan pizza. The owners of Slice 420 came to Colorado because their daughter has cerebral palsy and epilepsy and they wanted to have access to the special medicine that Colorado can provide and they opened up this amazing pizzeria that has a vegan pizza that is so good. It doesn't have any cheese and that made me realize that I hadn't eaten any vegan cheese all week and I'm pretty proud of that. So if you're ever in old Colorado City in Colorado Springs, be sure to check out Slice 420. You won't regret it. So we're finally to the last meal of the day and the last meal of the week. I finally cooked up those veggie meatballs, which were pretty good. They were okay. I probably wouldn't buy them again though. And I made up some quick pesto pasta by literally just putting pesto on pasta. And I also made some garlic lemony asparagus. And yeah, this was a great meal to end the week and to end this video. So that's it. That was everything I ate this week. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some inspiration or ideas out of it. Um, <laughs> like I said, it was fun and challenging to make. I hope this video didn't end up being too long. And if you stuck around till the end and are actually listening to this, I thank you so much for watching my video and for watching it the entire way through. You don't know how much that means to me. 
So like I said, if you like this kind of content, if you want to continue seeing what things I eat in a week, because like I said, it changes all the time, um, let me know in the comments below and I will work on another one of these for the future. So that's it for now. I hope you have a great day and a great week and I will see you in the next video. Peace.